Fate comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You're listening to The Moment of Power with Azano Eddie Thompson. Daily audio devotions to energize your day presented by the Advent Hero Ministries. Our moment of power topic today is not for sale, part two. And Naboth said to Ahab, the Lord forbid it me that I should give the inheritance of my fathers unto thee. First Kings chapter 21 verse 3. Once again here we see an individual, we see a business proposal, we see a deal going on that was of course not culminated because Naboth refused to sell his father's inheritance. It was part of the laws of God, the civil laws in the Old Testament that you should not sell your father's inheritance. But because Ahab was an apostate, he had brought Baal worship into Israel and he had been disobeying God. And now he wants others to follow suit. You see, that's one thing with apostasy. The apostates always want people to follow them. They always want people to do what they have done. Look at Adam and Eve. Eve ate the fruit and she wants Adam to eat it. Cain was angry because Abel did not do as he did. And he became very angry, envious and angry and killed his brother. That is the spirit of the persecutor. That's why the apostate becomes a persecutor because the devil puts in his mind to always drag others to do what they are doing. And so Ahab saw this vineyard close to his palace, but it belonged to someone else. And then he approached the man. He said, look, I'll give you a lot of money. Or better still, I'll give you a better land somewhere else. But Naboth continued to reject. And you know the story. Ahab went home behaving like a little child. And the wife saw his fallen countenance. I was asking him, why are you downcast? And he said, it is because I asked for the vineyard of Naboth and he wouldn't sell it. And then his diabolic wife, Jezebel, actually plotted the death of Naboth using some nobles and elders in Israel. I wonder what's noble about these nobles, so-called nobles. They were not noble in any way. Because Jezebel wrote a letter to them and asked them to do some shady things, to tell lies against Naboth, to hire people who could tell lies and who could testify against him about blasphemy so that they could put him to death and take his vineyard from him. In fact, the Bible even said that they even destroyed his children because as long as his children are alive, they cannot really take the vineyard. And that's how wicked people can go. Very, very wicked. But Naboth stood for the Lord until his death. Naboth was a martyr. There is nothing shameful about what he has done. There is nothing foolish about what he has done. It is those who are wicked. And so the nobles decided to take side with Jezebel. I guess they believe that their philosophy is right. I mean, might is right. After all, they're the leaders. You don't go against the leaders. So these nobles could be bought or sold. Unlike Naboth who could not be bought or sold, they could be bought or sold. The Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. These nobles, these elders, they know the truth. But they sold their souls to Jezebel. They sold their souls for relevance, for recognition. These elders sold their souls. And that's what the Bible says. So they went and actually hired some scums of the society to tell lies. And they said they were doing a revival. But it was not a revival. It was an occasion to destroy Naboth. And so Naboth stood for his inheritance. Today, we have inherited a lot of great things from our spiritual phobias. We have inherited truths, doctrines that we don't have to sell. We have a heritage, a very rich heritage that we don't have to give up. The doctrines about who Christ is, the doctrines about the Sabbath, the doctrines, yes, about Christ in the heavenly sanctuary ministering 
for us. These things, we cannot sell them under no circumstance. Um, we need to pray that the Spirit of the Lord will fill us so that we will not be men who could be bought or sold like the nobles who were bought or sold. We have to be like Naboth, even at the expense of our lives. We need to stand as guardians of the ancient truths that God has given to us. Let us pray. Father, we give you glory today. We worship you. We praise you. We pray that you will help us to stand, even when it means our lives. You help us to stand by the truth that you have given us, that our forebears have died for. Uh, many of them were born to life. Many of them were actually buried alive. Many of them were pursued out of their homes. They lost everything earthly. And so this truth has come to us on the river of blood. And we cannot at this time, because of the fear of not being relevant, because of the fear of not being able to preach in some quarters, because of the fear of livelihood, we cannot at this point give up these truths. We pray that you give us the grace, your spirit. We pray that your name will be glorified in our lives and in our ministry. Help us to keep upholding the truth. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.